Today's commentary is titled, Are They Waking Up At Last Or What? When we read in Vanguard newspaper of November 14, 2009, a statement credited to the President General of Ohanez and Chief Rafu Wechwe, quote, Igbo marginalization can break up Nigeria, end quote. We couldn't help but experience a splitting moment of satisfaction and even relief. At last, an Igbo leader is stepping up to the plate. At long last, an Igbo leader is showing some spine and maybe even balls. Maybe an Igbo leader will stand up and speak truth to corrupt power. Maybe Igbo leaders will rise from their moral deathbeds. Maybe. Just maybe. The statement by Chief Uwechwe is really not such an earth-shattering revelation or even such a big deal, especially as everyone knows that Nigeria is already dead and just waiting to be buried, and especially as Chief Uwechwe is still talking about building the nation called Nigeria, whatever that means. However, the mere fact that Chief Uwechwe pointed at just a tiny fraction of the horrific bad faith which the Sokoto Caliphate, the House of Fulani Yoruba Oligarchy, have displayed toward the Igbo in the half a century existence of so-called independent Nigeria is worthy of note. That such a tiny and non-threatening statement evoked even the slightest notice by anyone tells us a lot about the depth of despair the Igbo have suffered in Nigeria. Can you imagine what would have happened if the cardinals and bishops in all our churches, world acclaimed international writers and intellectuals, top military brass, serving and retired, international civil servants, world renowned inventors and scientists, top journalists, Actors and musicians from Igbo land in particular, and the Eastern region in general, all have, with one voice, been speaking up forcefully in various international forums against the persecution and the enslavement of the Igbo and other people of Eastern region. Can you just imagine how the world would have rallied to our defense and support? When you talk about the evil that the Sokoto Caliphate and the House of Fulani Yoruba Oligarchy, hiding under the umbrella of Satanic One Nigeria, have perpetrated on the Igbo and their brothers, it is clear that Chief Uwechwe did not even scratch the surface of that evil. We will just scratch the surface for you. The fight for Nigerian independence was carried almost entirely by the Igbo and other people of Eastern region and a handful of Lagosians like Habat Macaulay. The NCNC, the only truly national political party that carried the fight for independence, was led for one year by Habat Macaulay, who died the same year in 1945. Thereafter, Nanda Zikiwe was elected the leader of the NCNC, and with other people of Eastern region, including Professor Eyoita, Alvan Ikoku, Waforizu, Emai Opara, Dennis Osadebe, Akano Ibiam, Antony Enaforo, and others, forced the British to grant self-government to the three regions of Nigeria, East, West, and North, and eventually independence to the country. While the East and West accepted self-government, but insisted on full independence, the North insisted on remaining a colony of the British government. The North delayed independence for everyone for another three years, as Azikiwe and the NCNC begged the North to accept freedom, 
for their people. Shameless people. By the time the Northern Feudalists accepted to be part of independent Nigeria, they insisted on having half of the seats in the Federal House of Representatives. Azikiwe and the NCNC acquiesced. Then, they insisted on producing the executive prime minister and gave Namdi Azikiwe, the holder of bachelor's degree from Lincoln University in the United States, and the master's degree from University of Pennsylvania, an Ivy League school in the United States. They gave him the ceremonial office of governor general without any powers. Azikiwe acquiesced. Thus, throughout the whole of West, East, Central, and Southern Africa, the only person who led his people to independence and freedom, but was denied the opportunity to head the government at independence, was Dr. Nandi Azikiwe, who, even until his death, was continually denied that opportunity to put his ideas into concrete reality. Rada, Alahaji, Malan, Aboba Katafawa Balewa, a grade 2 teacher, and one of those who opposed independence was handpicked by Alahaji Amadou Bello, the Sadana of Sokoto, and sent to Lagos to become the Prime Minister of Nigeria. Now, judge for yourself what damage he and his Sokoto Caliphate rulers did to Nigeria. Before independence in 1946, the British colonial government had completed plans to establish a apartheid system in just northern Nigeria, just as they had in South Africa. They had segregated certain parts of Joss for whites only and started building schools for whites only. It was Namdi Azikiwe who organized huge protest movements and forced the British to abandon the establishment of apartheid system in northern Nigeria. How did they not pay Azikiwe back? In all the efforts to organize a meaningful census in Nigeria, the North has always inflated its population to dizzying figures, thereby specializing in what will euphemistically be called, quote, fuzzy math. The West soon joined the North in doing the same thing. That practice has continued till today and has resulted in census figures that indicate that Kano alone has more people and therefore more local governments than all of Igbo land. As laughable as this is to any sane man or woman, it is still the official census figure of Nigeria today. The Igbo acquiesced. In 1964, the Premier of Eastern Region, Dr. Emma Yotbara, argued that revenue allocation should be on the basis of derivation. That is, that the people from whose land the revenue is generated should be allowed and allocated the revenue from their land. The government of Western Nigeria joined the government of Northern Nigeria in opposing this policy and the return to the way revenue had always been allocated when Granot and Tin were king in the north and Kuko was king in the west. The west and the north then insisted on land mass and fake population as criteria for revenue allocation. The east was defeated. Baby killer Yakubu Gowan Working for the Sokoto Caliphate under House of Fulani Yoruba Oligarchy, cut off oil bearing Igbo communities in southern Igbo land and merged them with other ethnic groups. Then, the evil government of Nigeria commenced pressuring them to deny their Igbo identity. It bribed their leaders, cajoled, and even threatened them. Some communities have acquiesced, denied their Igbo identity and started bastardizing their names and the names of their communities. 
baby killer, Yakubu Gowon, even confessed that the reason why he created states in 1967 was to subvert the identity of the Igbo and undermine the unity of the people of Eastern region. Now, we ask you, did he succeed? In 1965, the Sokoto Caliphate of the Nigerian federal government of Malam, Abubakar Tafawa Balewa, subverted the Yoruba and made them engage in an internecine war in which they slaughtered themselves in large numbers and burnt down whole communities in what they called Operation Weti. The Caliphate had also imprisoned Chief Awolowo, the leader of the Yoruba, and thrown Yoruba land into anarchy. The Igbo were horrified. Then.